Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Yay! Hey everybody, it's Michael Colom with Mimosas with Michael, and this week I have a really awesome guest, Sarah Dahman. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> um, so Sarah and I were introduced um, to each other by my manager, uh, Matt Chasen. Well, actually, our manager, Matt Chasen. Mm -hmm. But I found it fascinating because you are a coppersmith. I know you're more than that, but I want to start with a coppersmith because that's not something a lot of people are familiar with. So just right out the gate, what is a coppersmith? So a coppersmith can be uh, any number of things. People will say they're a coppersmith and they make jewelry with copper, um, or they'll say they're a coppersmith and they do uh, copper roofs, you know, the flashings on roof. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but for me, I say I'm a coppersmith and I make pots and pans and fix them or restore them or do random builds. And so when I say I'm a coppersmith, I mean like traditional copper cookware the way it was hundreds of years ago. That is actually really yeah. cool. And you know, we had this conversation before, but because um, I have hemochromatosis and I can't eat a lot of iron, uh, one of the things is I can't eat food that's prepared on like an iron skillet. So I think like something like copper would be really awesome because like you were saying, it's very minimal, the amount of iron that's like reduced into the cooking. Well, um, actually, there's no iron in copper cookware if you have a tin line copper skillet. If you Copy have a you have a stainless steel line copper pot, you're definitely yeah. getting you know, some iron from the stainless steel because that does have iron in it, but copper and then by default, the tin that's lining the inside is non-ferrous, meaning there's no iron in it. So you can get zero iron from cooking in a tin line copper pot. <laughs> okay, that's what I have to invest in this copper. Okay, but I mean, but it's, it's so fascinating. Like, so what got you into something like, like making copper cookware? I mean, that's no. not something people like decide one day, like, I'm just going to make copper pot cookware, you know? That's totally true, and um, I didn't know it was a that. career either. No, hell no. Okay. Um, are you to <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're rating. You're fine. You're fine. I mean, the show's called Mimosas with Michael, so. Oh, okay. So know, people, no yeah, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry. My mimosa. I was going to have a mimosa. Um, I'm drinking coffee because, you know. Well, it's early by you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't plan on it at all. It's really not a job. I mean, there's a reason I, I can say, as far as I know, I am the only woman in America who is making copper cookware. Which is no, awesome. That no one can find anybody else. And actually, I don't know of anybody, even the retinners I know, they don't build it. They'll retin, but they won't build. And so I don't, it's not a thing. It's gone. So that it's not like a career you can even wake up and be like, when I grow up, I want to be a coppersmith or I want to make yeah. pots and things. Um, but I started by accident I was writing I was researching and writing some of my uh for my novels I write historical fiction novels and I was doing a yep. lot of research and it led me down the let's see how they you know what pots and pans they used oh let's see how they used to make them oh why are people not making these anymore oh maybe someone should make them again oh I should see how it used to be made like back in the 17 and 1800s when my books were set so yeah. I happened to live minutes from a, a master uh traditional smith and he took me under his wing as an apprentice for over four years and i uh became a coppersmith now that's actually really cool that's really cool yeah so you've been doing it for what four years now five years um yeah i've been doing cookware for over five years but i've been like my hands on the metal for about four and a half okay that's still a good time though that's a good amount of time and because and you've done youtube videos about because i've seen some of your videos you've done youtube videos where you include your family because you have yeah. a husband and two two kids I have three kids. Three kids. Okay, sorry, I forgot one. It's okay, no, it's okay. It's okay. it's a lot of kids. Just it's a lot of kids. Um, yeah, they're just kids. kids. There's kids. <laughs> and no, I do. I I include the the family in a lot of it because they do end up being part of it. My kid, like when my daughter turned five, her first request was that she learn how to solder. So I was like, yeah, sure. that's kind of cool. Yeah, but uh, um, how many young how many young girls can say that? That's so awesome. No, right? I know. Yeah. And then I'd just be like, here, don't burn yourself. She totally burned herself. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but yeah. But at least you were there to w help her and watch her. Yeah. That's yeah, so I mean, fascinating. It's 
cool. It's cool. We do. I do do a lot on YouTube on um, a lot of the traditional smithing because that information is almost completely eradicated. And, um, and I get a lot of people who go, thank you. Thank you. Because this isn't anywhere else. Um, because it's such a weird thing, right? But I would really yeah. love more people to put their hands on it. I think that that would make the world a better place. Frankly. Well, I don't think many people think about it. Like I would have never thought, like I, most of my cookware in my mind is stainless steel because I couldn't, I can't cook on iron. I would have never thought about wait, copper isn't something that you just don't go to the store and buy a lot of copper stuff per se. So when Matt told me you were a coppersmith, I was like, uh, Google, what is a coppersmith? You know, it was just like, <laughs> I, it's not something I would randomly think of, you know, so that's yeah. probably why. Yeah. But, it, yeah. but when you find out about it, it's the coolest thing. And then you're wondering, like, why is there not enough copper? So I, I, I'm with you on that one. So then when you make them, are you able, do you, can you sell them? Or do, like, do you go to fair and sell them? Or do you sell it online? Are yeah, you an I mean, Etsy person? No, I don't do Etsy. Um, no, I have like an actual, you know, e-commerce platform that I, I have a, a, through my business. And then I do also um, allow like mom and pop startups to carry it. I like to keep it really local, really um small nice. business minded. It's just, it's not, I have no help, so I can only make so much yeah. and, um, or design so much. We just got a commission, me and Bob that I, well, he doesn't know about it yet, but I found out that, uh, someone asked us to make a almost six foot wide copper, like cauldron to put outside of a vintage train station out in the Dakotas. Uh. So I haven't told them yet. I just said, just so you know, we got in a commission. It's big. That's and so awesome. they're paying for us to drive it out there because you can't ship something that huge. And so it's and probably really heavy like, too. Yeah. And he, and just huge, just huge. and yeah. oh, six, almost six feet this big around and four feet tall. So almost as tall as me. And they're gonna plant oh it to train it. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> well, you have to make sure you get a picture of yourself next to it when you put it when you get it there. <laughs> be in it. You can see this much of That was so cool. That's a great that's a nice answer. That could be like one like a like a like a photo or something for when you do, you know, you just saw that'd yeah. be kind of fun. Yeah. You can I use know. it to promote. Just, That's it's so just, it's just nonstop. It's just, there's nobody doing this. So the requests are very bizarre. I had somebody once ask if I could do a, a copper grill for a car in the design of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I had to Google that too. I was like, no, like, thank you for thinking I can, but I'm drawing the line on car parts. Like, yeah. Me to make <laughs> that's so interesting i mean i haven't seen chitty chitty bang bang in years me either i had to like look up what the car was and it's not a simple thing it's very involved and i was like that is not happening dude. yeah that's yeah and that would require a lot of re materials and resources and time and well yeah. it's just i'm not a car part maker i make like i will make that's you a, a cauldron that's the cauldron is kind of cool as somebody oh. who loves who loves horror i mean the cauldron sounds really awesome one of these days yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of these days when I can afford it, I will commission you to make me a cauldron. No, what you need to do is to have me co commission me to make like a really exotic looking copper goblet that has like magical powers that like makes you into a monster when you. Well, you definitely have me a goblet. I would definitely love a goblet. Yeah. That sounds like a great anniversary gift. Like make like, like goblets. Oh, that's true too. I guess. Yeah. So many ideas. I know. Look at, see, that's why we do this. <laughs> this is where we get inspired. So, okay. So, so you, you, you're researching your books, your historical novels, and you started becoming a coppersmith, and now you have a cookbook. Yeah. Now this yeah. is. Now I know it just got. I know it was launched a couple months ago. Yeah. But is that your first cookbook? It is, and I mean, okay. it's it's half memoir, half how-to, and half cookbook. Um, That's three halves. I'm really bad at math, which is ironic. No, I love it. That's great. <laughs> but okay, I love it. I would have said the same thing, so I'm fine. No, and that's true. Like, I'm horrible at math. Horrible. And that's all I do now as a coppersmith. And it's not even easy math. It's like, well, take the radius um, times pi and then by 360 degrees. Like, so much horrific math. And wow. I know. Um, but, um, but, yes, it's a, it's a book. It's, it's a lot about the use and the history and the science and the care of cookware. And then in the back half, all, all the recipes. But the front is like, this is what you're cooking on. This is why you're cooking on it and how it works. And this is why me, hi, I'm writing about it and where I come from and how I know what I know. And there's, and so it's a lot of trivia. It's a lot of um, how you take care of it. What happens if you want to reseason your cast iron skillet, all of that information, because I, I was like, 
The last book on anything with copper, anything with copper, was published in 1894. Oh, wow. This probably explains why people don't know a lot about copper cookware. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. 1894? So, 1894. Yeah, we're definitely due. We're definitely due for one. See? That's it, The Art of Coppersmithing, huh? Yeah. Wow. By John Fuller. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And he even starts out the book saying, my dad told me never to tell anybody what I know, but I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter because no one does it anyways but you, so. Everybody forgot. So there you go. All right, so Coppersmith, you wrote a book, and now you have a YouTube channel, and, and now you're wrapped by Matt, my manager, which is cool. Yeah, I know. And, I know. and we've been working on some stuff, but we can't talk about it right now. But we got some things, we got some things brewing in our cauldron. Yes, we do. Let's go. It would be so, fun. Um, so, I mean, I would imagine that as, like, like a, a, a young woman who's a mom and, and lives in the middle of, like, middle America, um, that who's also writing and blo and blogging, no, blogging, vlogging, all that stuff. I mean, you must be an inspiration to young children. I mean, your daughter must look up to you. But, I mean, I would imagine that there's other young women out there who are just, like, so inspired by what you do. I mean, I'm inspired by you, and <laughs> I don't even do half of no. what you do. No, thank you. No, you know, I hope, I just hope that there's, like, if anybody finds out what I do, they just go, oh, like, anything is possible. Oh, why not try something? I, I can't tell you how many times in my life I have kind of stopped. And part of this is coming from being from middle America, right? We are, yeah. it's a, really, you don't talk about your accomplishments because it's considered to be a little vulgar and ostentatious to talk about what you have on your plate. So I'm doing things with yeah. things with you, things that, with Matt, things on my own plate that I don't even bother to tell people because they'll be like, really? Mm -hmm. Look at you, you know? And yeah. so I don't talk about it that much, That's... but when people do meet me or, or when I get talking with people and we start exchanging ideas, but my thing that I hope they all take away from anything I say is, you know, just do it. Like, even when you have that moment of what am I doing? This is crazy. Who does this? just do it anyway, because I've had that moment all the time. Who does what I'm doing? This is ridiculous. Why am I doing this? It's so out there. And then I'm like, just do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just, what's the worst that could well, happen? I mean, in a sense, you're not really doing it for them. You're doing it for yourself. True. Right. So, I mean, that's, and I think that's what's important is, is that like, like I, we do art. It, this is one of those things. Like I do art, I make movies and other things because I want other people to see it, but I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because I need a creative outlet. Right. But it's funny. You should say that because I, I, I find that a lot is like, when people talk about yourself, they're like, Oh, you're so self-centered. And I give it, I get called that a lot. I go, I really not trying to be, it's like, but it, people, are, when people ask me what I'm up to, I'm only giving them like the top four things because if they really knew the other 13 I was doing, they're like, that's a lot. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I, can't, I mean, I'm in the middle of a pandemic and I'm just sitting here doing nothing. You know, I don't have a family like like you do, so I it's like just Michael. So I just I get up every day and I'm either writing or or I'm recording a podcast or I go out and do photographs. It's just what I'm doing. So, but it's interesting that you you find the same way when really you're like I'm not trying to be like I don't want people to feel like I'm ever throwing it in their face. Like you're asking me what I'm doing and I'm telling you exactly, and that's but what it the, is. Yeah. In a weird way, they're like they're instead of them going like. Ugh, you know, you're, you're throwing it in my face, but really it's like, I think they're just kind of displaced in the fact that like, how does she have the energy to do all this stuff? <laughs> I, 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 know, I look at it like this, like there's two kinds of people I feel like right now during the quarantine, there's the people that are eating right and exercising. And there's people like me who are just like, eh, I like food. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, and I, it's like, I can't get mad at those people that are exercising. I can do it. You know, it's just like, I'm in a different mindset. This is a, this is a weird kind of time that we're in right now. Yeah. It's like either you know. live it up and eat the donuts or go full fledged, like live differently. And I will admit I am one of the ones who was like, we are going to eat. And this happened before the pandemic, but my, I came home from one of my, my travels and I walked in the door and my husband, we have been together 18 years and, um, and he's very used to like, I have an idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was like, I had this book and I was like, we are going to eat Nutritarian. And he's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's like vegan, but even more crazy, like no oils and no salt and no sugar. And, no and he's like, okay, 
no more cheese. Like, you know, we live in Wisconsin, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? You're literally known for your cheese. And I was That's... like, yes, because cheese is bad. And we've been doing it now for a while and I love it. Like, and I love, now granted, I haven't been able to exercise because I have a broken foot. We need four of a broken foot. It's That's enough. right. You have a broken foot. I'm sorry to hear that. Is it getting better at least? It is getting better, but of course it should have gotten better like in two weeks instead of the 12. It really, I just, I have no patience. So it's driving me a little longer. You have to be patient because you could have been done already. I could have had it done already and I could have had so much more done. Now I'm like slower. Yeah, that's okay. You'll get there. You got to take it easy. I know. I hate it. You don't even want to know. Today I mucked out the chicken coop. And the bunny hutch, and we did. We shoveled out all the main, the manure, and we watered a bunch of trees, and and. That's right. You have like a little farm on your on your lot. Yeah. I know. Yeah. When I was in Wisconsin visiting my sister, I, I was too far south, and you were too far north to visit. Yeah. yeah. But I will definitely come. I hope visit. so. We yeah. have an in-law suite that is not being used. So. Oh, sounds like a great riders retreat. I, it would be. I would apologize in advance for my kids who would probably want to play with you, but. Well, I'm a cool guy to play with, so it's fine. They'd be like, let's do Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> my, oh, my nephew would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about Minecraft. He plays it all, and I sit there and I watch, and I'm like, this is, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I don't get it at all. And I, and I, and I said that to my husband. I was like, I don't get it. And he's like, who cares? The guy who made it is like a bajillionaire. Like, who cares? Yeah. And it works. Yeah. Some. It's like that Fortnite thing. I mean, I yeah. don't get it. But I, mean, I like little games on my phone, but I, I'm not a big I'm not really a big gamer per se. Like I'll watch, I'll play like little puzzle games on my phone, but really I'm just not. I I I actually bought a Nintendo something not a DS a few years ago, and I played it for like half a year because I I thought it'd be something fun to have on set, and I pull it out. But then nowadays it's like phones. I can play the same thing on my phone. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I, know. I guess I guess it's probably good to have because then I can keep my phone free. Right. Right. right? I, I I don't I'm know. Not a gamer. Whatever. I can't. I yeah, can't. I'm not a gamer. But there's a whole culture. I mean, now that there's Twitch and everything, Twitch is probably the one thing I couldn't really get into with the live streaming because I don't play games. I'm just not a gamer. It's Twitch. It's a live streaming thing where uh, it's mostly used for gamers. I mean, I think some people can use it for podcasts and stuff. Hmm. I don't have that big. I don't have that big of an audience yet. But we're gonna get there, you guys. But Twitch is just one of those things where when you're playing games, you can live stream. That's all it is. That's my understanding. There's so I, many social I, medias. I know. I. Can't keep up. I'm stuck in the 1800s, so I can't keep up. <laughs> oh, yeah. They didn't know that stuff in the 1800s. No, they did not. No, they, and my kids, like, we can't. So we do rendezvous a lot. Well, not during a pandemic year. But when we don't have the pandemic year, we do rendezvous, which is like um, fur trade era reenactment camping with big groups of people. Oh, okay. It's, it's a thing. It's a huge thing that, uh, <laughs> like, some no. of them are so big, there's waiting lists and, to be able to camp. And you have to be period correct. So my kids have to go like five days without any devices, any, no phones allowed, no iPad. Like it's very strict and you have to live and camp as if it was 1820. And everybody. Your kids, and your kids like that? Oh, like, yeah. Okay. Oh, they love it. They I'm just five days without Minecraft and Fortnite must drive them crazy. Yeah, no, they are. They they would drop it all in a second to go do a rendezvous, and we actually have some friends who have kids their age too, and they're just like, "Wait, how do we get into this?" And now they have a tent, and they've got the clothes, and their kids are doing it. Like every, they just because they get to be kids in the way like Lauren Gales Wilder used to be a kid. They yeah. five days running outside, making forts in the mud. Yeah. Nobody, you know, it's a, the encampments are enclosed and. And they'll disappear and we'll be like, where are they? Well, they've been spending three hours at the blacksmiths learning how to do blacksmithing or with the flint napper or, you know, and so they get all this hands-on stuff. And of course, everybody's so happy to teach young kids these trades and crafts and get yeah. hands up. And it's like, it's, man, if I was a kid, again, that would be. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, um, my parents belonged to this camping organization. So like every one weekend a month, we would go camping, right? Uh, and back then we didn't have devices, but... Um, when my nephews were young, I was like, why can't you just go outside and play? Like we, we would go camping and my parents never saw us. We'd go hiking. We went, we would build, like you said, build forts. We would just explore and do stuff. My parents didn't, we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't go too far cause we were at this campground, but like we were always just, you know, it was always as like, you can never go further than your mother could yell. That was the thing you could do as a kid. But like we, I can't imagine that, like just like that exploring. So I can't see why your kids like that. Yeah. There's just yeah. something about being outside being, it's just a whole different sort of world and nature that you don't right. see often anymore. 
So. No, it's it's gone. And and I think too, I mean, what makes it safe at a at a rendezvous is even if there's six thousand people in the rendezvous camp, A, it's enclosed with a fence along the parameter, and yeah. B it, it's a, the people that do this hobby, it's a hobby. The people that do this hobby are all, um, uh, it's a lot of older, like grandparent age people right now. And mm-hmm. also they're all, um, they're, they're trades, they're salt of the earth people. They're the ones who are leather working on that. Like everybody has a thing, right? And so if somebody gets hurt and they're a cro- acres away, they'll figure out who the parents are. They'll come. So whenever there's kids in the area, the adults are just like, keeping an eye, oh, they, there's kids over there. And it doesn't matter that it's not theirs. They just take on the responsibility that the kids are playing closest to their campsite and they just watch them. That's and how they so, say it takes a village to raise kids right there. And it's just, they go and, and they're all, all the kids are wearing furs and leather and prairie dresses and barefoot. I mean, so it's like total make-believe world. Sounds kind of fascinating. Yeah, it's like it's like a Halloween thing in a way where you play dress up, which people yeah. like, but you're living but a different style. Even the very, yeah, it's very historical. That's kind of cool, actually. I kind of want to do it now. You should come when we do it. Not this. I mean, obviously, this year is almost over in pandemic. But yeah. we'll have to time your visit so that you get to camp. And you will get very much a lot of, like, under your wing kind of vibe from all the people. That's very interesting. That sounds fun. So, so are you guys surviving the pandemic then? Are you guys okay out there? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. We, it's there's so much space i've got acres and yeah. so before my next year i mean it's you know and we managed by adding a giant 32 foot by 32 foot enclosed garden that's what nice. we did. okay we made a garden and a big fire pit area and uh you can give me more reasons to want to come visit what i said you keep giving me more reasons to come visit the more you talk the more i'm like i want to see all that yeah no, sounds so fun. fascinating yeah, no, it's 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 fine, and we okay. have we have we have wonderful friends who have tons of acres who also have farms and and mini farms and hobby farms and all that stuff, and and we just have been able to once it warmed up, let our kids go play. Where you're more worried about ticks than you are COVID, because they're outside and yeah. Well, years. you know, here I'm here in LA, and it's such a it's so because when the pandemic first started, it was very cold and overcast. It rained that week. Uh, we had a full moon. We had Friday the thirteenth. It was very interesting, but now. It's like a, it's been it's in the high hundreds. It's so hot here. Luckily, we're not humid, but it's hot as hot, you know. But like now, everybody's going to the beaches, so it's so hard to like fight off the pandemic because it's nobody can stay inside. It's so hot; they want to go to the beach, and and the beaches are swarmed now. I don't go to the beaches much, anyways, because I burn in like five minutes. But it's just it's such a, it's so crazy, like that how different. Like we're all packed together here, anyways, in the city of Los Angeles. Right. True. Yeah, and that's like, I mean, city living right now is I wouldn't, I, you couldn't pay me to live in a city in, in, in a pandemic. And if anything, it's made even my husband and I go, I wonder if we could get a place even further up North, like even further away from people. But, but here it's just, there's just not enough people. I mean, Milwaukee probably yeah. is, is the closest. And even in Milwaukee, you can get away, you know, you can drive 15 minutes and be in the middle of a farm field. If, That's true. If, yeah. I mean, it's just so different. It's, um, I've been to Milwaukee a couple of times. So yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different. It's, it's a different vibe and it's kind of nice. I mean, people, it, we're very safe here. If there's ever like a big terrorist attack, knock on wood, they'll forget mm-hmm. that Wisconsin exists. That's what's so beautiful about living here. We're safe. We're so boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you like cheese. And who doesn't like cheese? Yeah, yeah. I love cheese, by the way. Although, I guess it was just in Wisconsin. We didn't have cheese at all. But I will tell you, uh, I'm a big fan of the spotted cow. That's my favorite mm-hmm. beer. When I went to Milwaukee last, everywhere we went, I had to have a spotted cow. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I should send you my ne- um, my latest travel blog I did. But um, when I've been to Wisconsin a few times. But when my sister moved there a couple years ago, we went last year because I was, I was taking my nephew there. And the night we went in, it was this massive thunderstorm, which was kind of cool, right? And lighting and stuff. And I told my sister, I go, hey, if I go again, I want to see, because, you know, we don't have those here in LA, per se. You don't not, not like you guys have in the Midwest. No, not at all. Because we don't have humidity here. Like, the weather is different. It's always Aww. sunny. It's always sunny here. That's disgusting. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. I, we don't have seasons at all. It's, we have hot and hotter. That's what I tell people all the time. 
Oh, and oh. like I, I thought I knew what thunder was until I went to the Midwest. I, my family's from Missouri, and I remember I was 14 years old, and I experienced my first thunderstorm. I thought the world was ending. Like I had no idea. So that's that's how different oh, the weather. Oh, is. <laughs> yeah, and I remember at the time my my grandfather owned land in Kansas City, Kansas. And so he had a small little like trailer house thing on there and we went to go visit. It was me and my cousin and my sister and some of the neighbor kids. And it was three, the neighbor kids were three girls. So my grandparents had all the girls sleep in the house and my cousin and I slept out in their van. They just had this big van. There's no big deal. It's in the middle of Kansas, but we were sleeping in a van in the middle of a thunderstorm and that van shook and I was terrified. I must've clinged to my cousin. He, he slept with the whole thing. I thought the world was ending. But anyways, it's different. Now that I'm adult, it's different. But when we went to Wisconsin this year, a couple months ago, uh, this massive storm came in and there was this huge like circular cloud above us. And my sister's like, oh, I've never seen that before. And I was like, we're going to die. <laughs> we were at this restaurant and this cloud was just like forming above us and it was swirling and it was like th there was hail and there's thunder and lightning and like all the power went out. And I was just like, well, and I had this massive spotted, we just bought this spotted beer, a spotted cow beer. And I was like, well, I'll die with this in my hand. <laughs> it was, it was yeah, the spotted cow. so fascinating. <laughs> Speaking of the spotted cow, have you had like, like, like the totally naked? Like that's one of their. No, I had a, oh, in, in Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. No, you know what? Well, from the New Blair's Brewing Company that their main one is spotted cow. That's their main beer. But then yeah. they have other flavors or you know types of beer they've got a, a some squirrel beer and then they've got totally naked and then they've got um they have a couple seasonal ones okay i haven't um, had those yeah, yeah. there's this really cool restaurant we went to the first time and then we went back again uh it's called the river rat it's right on the right on the river uh it's on french island which is not too far from because my sister's on lacrosse mm -hmm. and we stumbled upon it last time and it's just the cutest little like little hole in the wall restaurant bar we sit out in the back patio because my family smokes, but it's right on the river. So people walk by on their boats. I mean, it's beautiful. So I, to me, it's fascinating because I'm just sitting there chilling. It's the weather's always nice when we go. I drink a spotted cow. I don't know. I like yeah. to get out. I love the city. I love the city, but I like to get out of the city. Yes. Right. And yeah. I like to go visit for like four days and then I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's an exhaust. If you're not used to it, it's very exhausting. The city. It's a little overwhelming. So, um, so where can we find your book? Is it on Amazon? Yes. So the all the books, the historical novels, and the um, and the Copper Iron and Clay, the nonfiction, um, is available anywhere. They're available okay. wherever books are sold, or if you do have a local bookstore who may or may not be open during the pandemic, they can order all of the books. So it's that's easy. awesome. Yeah. And then, and where can people find you? Like, what's your social medias? Um, my uh, Instagram handle is just at House Copper. Love it. So easy. very easy, house copper, and um, and the same on on Facebook and stuff like that. It's all linked. They can look me up, Sarah Downen, or House Copper and Cookware, and, and, we, and we've already we've already d discovered that you're not on Twitch. <laughs> not on Twitch. <laughs> not, although it might be kind of fun. I can't Would, keep up. I can't. No, there's a lot. I know, and I I have to keep because of my photography and my, my vlogging and my filmmaking and stuff, I have to have them all. Um, that's why my phone, I have, I have a hundred apps because it's like, you have to, you have to like do one and then you have to push it to all these places. I mean, it's fine because for the most part, once you get it set up, it's just a mattering of like push, 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 push it all out, you know, and then it's out there. I know it's just the creating of the content and I oh, have it's, to, it's exhausting. I have a Nick. Well, and we've, I think I showed it when we were on one of the calls with Matt, but like I have a very extensive um, and it'll be getting worse, uh, you know, like coordinating because I have to, all that, so much original content every day, multiple times, sometimes a day. It just gets me well, a lot. Look and, in, uh, I don't know. Look, look into live streaming when you make a, a copper pot. That might be kind of fun. You might hit an audience who didn't know it was there. I'm yeah, just throwing it out there. These are the tools and here's me getting burned and taking off half my hair it happens. I mean, you know, you'd be surprised. I mean, it's like I said, you're the only person out there who's doing it. So you, you definitely had, you might be surprised the kind of audience you get. Well, I guess you can also do YouTube watch, live or Instagram. Watch, yeah, I was going to say, watch the social media. You might see me in front of a fire. <laughs> It'll happen. Anyways, it was, um, thank you so much for taking the time. This show's only 30 minutes, but it goes really, really fast. Yeah. 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 This is great. I'm 
it, I'm really excited to be on this. I know I've heard so much about Mimosas with Michael with all of everything. So thank you for having me. Oh my God, my pleasure. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, everybody, Sarah Dahman, please check her out uh, and get her book. So we, you know, because she's the only person out there doing copper. So, you know, let's show the world the copper. Anyways, you can find uh, Mimosas with Michael um, anywhere you find podcasts. So that's, um, we're on Anchor, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Uh, I'm also on LoftyCast. I always forget to mention them and I apologize. Uh, we're now on YouTube, Instagram, TV. So we are everywhere. You can find podcasts. Again, thank you to my guest, Sarah Dahman, and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.